Welcome back to the studio. Today I'm working on Chesty and her bay color is mixtures of my mud which is two parts of ultramarine blue plus one part of alizarin crimson and then I've added cadmium orange into that, cadmium red light and a little bit more ultramarine blue. Just various combinations of those colors. I have several mixtures laid out on my palette that are in different values, different lights and darks. And then this way I can start blocking in the color on her neck. She's a pretty blood bay, dark blood bay. And as her neck turns under here, it gets less light. I worked out all of my reflections when I did my initial wash in with my oil wash of my mud plus liquid. And this allows me to make sure that my lights and darks are correct. I like to do that. Somebody had a really good question, one of my readers, that by doing that oil wash drawing, she says, well, aren't you actually kind of painting the painting twice? And yes, in a sense, I am. But by getting all the details worked out in my initial wash, oil wash drawing, then when I paint, I don't have to worry about those details, getting them right, getting anatomy right, getting my musculature right on the horse. I have all that correct. So then as I begin to paint, then I don't have to worry about any of that. I have my reference material on my laptop just to the right side of my easel. This allows me to view it as I'm working. We're going to have a little bit darker here because under the saddle and the saddle blanket we get, get that dark shadow from the sun. And get a little dark shadow up here. I'm leaving my reins in because I'm going to need to drag those back over Chesty's neck here. Coming back here, there's a little bit of a dark in here. And now this is just my initial block in. This is by no means finished. I'll need to come back and make adjustments and, and on this. But this just gives me my... I want to get the canvas covered. Then I can see what I need to do to do the refinements and finish it out. In the top of her neck here, she's getting quite a bit of light. It turns around. This her neck here, because her head's coming more forward than her neck there, gets a little more light. Light's coming in from the upper right of the paint. And this is lighter here, too. Then on the crest of her neck here, we get a real nice highlight. She's really shiny. Now, the cattle have been out. They're rough. They've been, the nights here in Idaho are, are, are cooler, even though it's summertime. But she's been blanketed, so her coat is really, really sleek. Again, this is not finished, finished, but this just starts getting my color blocked in there. Now her mane is black. She's a bay horse, and bay is a red-brown horse with black mane and tail and black lower legs, the knees and lower legs and fetlocks and pasterns are all black. I think they're really that's such a striking combination. Bay is my favorite color, of course. We're not going to see much of her mane. It's pretty much uh, on the other side of her neck. We want to highlight where it goes over. And we'll see. It comes up here under her head stall.
Now I'm going to start a little work on her head. And again, I just want to get the shadows in. This is the shadow side of her face. And this is my darkest mixture. This has more mud in it. And then her ear casts a shadow across her head up here. And that there, this right here is Bill's right foot. We'll do that later. Right now I just want to get Chesty's head, head locked in here. Now I've got that a little too dark there, but I'll come back and refine. Again, this is not, not meant to be the finished painting. Some of the skin shows through around the horse's eyes, and that'll be a little bit bluer in there, but or grayer, I guess, is a good way to put it. Um, but again, I'll come back and do that. I just want to get the initial shadow and light pattern walked in here so I can just need to start getting this canvas covered. Now we get a little lighter here. Molly's talking to us. I'm not sure exactly what she wants, but she's a very vocal girl. She's a talker. And then I bring in some highlights. You can see her head starting to take some shape. A little light there. I need a bigger brush. Do her forehead. She doesn't have any white on her face. She's just, this is just our nice bay, rich bay color coming down the front of her face. And I have several photographs to work from. And so I can, some were taken indoors with a flash. This was taken out in the sunlight. This is actually what I'm using for reference is a, a digital image of a photograph. So the the colors are a little faded out, but I talked with the collector and he told me, he kind of described what the, what the differences were. And here's some of that grayer color around her eye, and it'll come down on her nose too, her muzzle here. We start seeing getting we start getting some shape into her head. Cheek down here catches some light. And I'll paint the bridle back over. We're going to be darker down in here. She goes, this goes under her neck. And then also this rain is going to cast a shadow on her neck. So since I've got some dark in my brush, I'm just going to go ahead and put that, put that in there. And also this, this rain has a little shadow here underneath the underneath where the rain's going to be. These are split rains and so the ends of them dangle down and it really that's really nice because it, it gives us some feeling, helps give the feeling of the action in the painting. Now we're a little lighter here. On the, this comes in here lighter. And then I'll bring a little of this 
grayer color onto her, her muzzle. I'll have to darken that, but that I'll come back and again do more work on this, but let's get her ears up here. This one's pretty much in shadow on this, this side of it, and then it, that shadow that it casts over. Insides of their ears are darker, so I use some of my darker mixture. Those light cows, the Herefords behind her, the white faces, they help accentuate the dark of her on her head and ears. And I've kept them very soft. Now she's going to have very sharp edges, hard edges. Sharp edges come forward, softer edges go back. So that's helping to give the feeling of distance in this painting is with the sharp edges on her head, then that makes it come forward of the cattle in the background. Okay, we've got Chesty pretty well blocked in. I've got a lot more work to do on her, but this gives you a feeling of we've got the canvas covered and getting her color in there. I really appreciate you watching my YouTube videos. I do hope you'll subscribe to my channel and come visit my blog. I'll show I have the complete step-by-step -step process of this painting as well as others I do. The link is in the description below. The address is also on the final frame of my YouTube video along with the address of my official website. So again, I really appreciate you watching and have a wonderful, wonderful day.